Today, we're going to be very precise about how time-restricted feeding, it's very clear from both animal studies and human studies, can have a very powerful and positive impact on everything from weight loss and fat loss to various health parameters. You might be wasting your time on ineffective fitness programs. Andrew Huberman, a bright American neuroscientist and associate professor at Stanford University School of Medicine, has offered his evidence-based advice for how to always stay in shape. Turns out that the answer to the question, when is it best to eat, is actually best answered by thinking about the other side of the coin, which is when is it best to fast. Now, along with fasting, it's also important to get a good night's sleep. Here's what Huberman had to say. So because we are fasting during sleep, it's very clear that it's best to extend the sleep-related fast either into the morning or to start it in the evening. Let's think about what happens when we sleep. When we sleep, our body undergoes a number of different processes in the brain and body in order to recover the cells and tissues. Many of you have probably heard of autophagy, which is essentially a cleaning up, a gobbling up of dead cells and cells that are injured or sick. So you're already fasting when you're asleep. And how deep you are into that fast depends on how long it was since your last meal. Because we are fasting during sleep, it's very clear that it's best to extend the sleep-related fast. One thing is certain. You want your eating window to be tacked or attached to your sleep-based fasting in a way that makes it easier for you to get into the fasted state for a period of time. So, how do you do that? If you fast early in the day and you've been asleep for five, six, seven, eight hours, I would hope somewhere between six and eight hours for most people is going to be beneficial. When you wake up, I mentioned earlier that you don't want to eat for at least the first 60 minutes after waking, but were you to extend that fasting to say 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 a.m., or even 12 noon or later, you are taking advantage of the deep fast that you were in during sleep and certainly toward the end of sleep. Now, why do I say deep fast? Well, because when we eat, the clearance of that food from our gut and the processes in our cells and organs that are related to digestion and the utilization of that food takes about five to six hours. So if you eat a meal and that meal lasts 10 minutes, 20 minutes or 30 minutes or even an hour, and then you stop eating, you've stopped eating, but you are not fasting at that point. You can say you're fasting because you're no longer putting food into your digestive tract, but you are not in a fasted state. You are not under conditions of fasting. Getting proper movement is also important for your health and your body. Here's what Huberman had to say. Can you not eat until 2 p.m.? Drink coffee, drink water, and in the morning, get up and just get on either run or get on some exercise bike and just pedal like someone's chasing you with a syringe full of poison. When you've been asleep all night, your fuel reserves, like you've got fuel in your fat, got fuel in your muscles that can be burned, and you've got fuel in your liver. It's called glycogen. And when you wake up early, all of that is as low as it's going to be because you haven't been eating anything. Got you. And so if you exercise then, your body starts dropping into your body fat stores quicker. So are there any actual benefits from working out while fasting? Let's hear it from Huberman himself. Let's talk about movement and the more traditional kinds of movement, aka exercise, that has been shown to lead to increases in metabolism and fat loss to greater degrees depending on whether or not, for instance, you're fasted when you do it or not. Whether or not you do your cardio first or your resistance training first. We're, we're finally starting to arrive at a consensus of when is best to do exercise and what types of exercise to do if your goal is fat loss. So rather than think about weight training versus cardiovascular exercise, the most simple way, the most fluid way to have this conversation about exercise and fat loss is in terms of three general types of training, whether or not it's done with weights or body weight doesn't really matter. And those are high intensity interval training, something that seems to have gained a lot of popularity in recent years, so-called HIIT, H-I-I-T. So high intensity interval training, sprint interval training. So that's gonna be very high intensity or S-I-T or moderate intensity continuous training. Um, I don't think he'd mind if I say this, sorry, Mike, uh, in advance. But I met him, I was like, oh yeah, playback, playback photo. I'm like, of course, you know, and, um, and Mike, a Midwest guy, I know you guys should have him. He's like, 
He's like, I have a question. I'm like, all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's like, I think I need to get in shape. And at the time, he was carrying like an extra 50 or 60 pounds mm -hmm. weight. Not to embarrass you, Mike, but you had, what he called himself a pile. So <laughs> you were not a pile. You're still vertical. But, so, right. And, um, and then he said, uh, yeah, you know, I just don't feel good. You know, smoking too much, drinking too much. I just don't feel good. And people ask me this kind of stuff all the time. Yeah. Like, what do I do? How do I sleep better? How do I stop stressing? And usually I find that people are not serious, meaning they, they want an answer, but they don't want to do the work. Right. Yeah. right. So I was like, look, it's really simple. Can you not eat until 2 PM? Mm. I was like, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not hungry in the morning. I'm like, great. Drink coffee, drink water. And in the morning, get up and just get on either run or get on some exercise bike and just pedal like someone's chasing you with a syringe full of poison. Going yeah. back to the playback thing and him losing weight, because he, he did tell the story when he came here off camera. He was like, yeah, we did this whole thing and blah, blah, blah. I mean, Mike looks great nowadays. Looks I mean, great not that he didn't, yeah. you know, and years his sleep, ago. He's done all this stuff to work on his sleep yeah. also. I always say, and we can talk about these tools like the... If you want a better life in any way, mentally, physically, mm -hmm. let's say you're already killing it, you want to do even better, sleep. The the way, and you can get better at sleep. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. my, I, I have a problem. I, I go through spurts and I'm sure everybody does with yeah, sleeping well, issues sure. and stuff like that. And you know, there's all kind of types of things, but in my case, there's a, like I, I'm skinny, I guess my metabolism, my mom's skinny, my dad's skinny, like I'm just in good my, problem in my to nature. Have. If you had to pick. Right, if yeah. I had to pick for sure. Especially but for skateboarding. I'd love to, you know, 10 pounds, 15 pounds, but there's all this stuff really? out there. You I would love to. Oh. Let's ask the question that I think many of people are wondering about it, which is, is it better? Meaning do you burn more fat if you do your exercise fasted and fasted in this respect could be that you wake up in the morning, you've been fasting all night, you just hydrate and you exercise, or sometimes people will ingest caffeine. In any case, that would be fasted. So probably not having eaten anything for anywhere from three to 24 hours or maybe even more. You can find a number of examples where eating before exercise reduces the amount of fat that's oxidized during the exercise. And you can also find a lot of studies showing that eating during exercise will, or prior to exercise, will not reduce the amount of fat that's oxidized. However, the types of exercise, whether or not it was medium intensity, or high intensity or low intensity is all over the map for these studies. So it's very hard to target an ideal protocol. At a period of about 90 minutes of moderate intensity exercise, there's a switchover point whereby if you ate before the exercise, you will reduce, excuse me, you will burn far less fat from the 90 minute point onward. Whereas if you had fasted, prior to the exercise, you hadn't eaten anything for three hours or more prior to the exercise, at the 90 minute point, you will, 90 minutes of exercise, you will start to burn more fat than you would had you eaten. By following his guidelines on eating habits, movement, and exercising while fasting, you can take control of your health and achieve the results you've always wanted.